Hello guys, Sandeep here. Welcome to our channel. In this particular video, we are going to discuss certain things about the foundation system or the foundation. How are you going to design the foundation in the safe? After exporting the e-tabs, what are the different options are there? And after going to the safe, how are you going to deal with it? Okay, so before making due date, let's get started. So this is the the project which we are going to discuss so let's say for example it just build up the project so let's say it's 10 story building three meter by three meter uh we'll just go with the ribbed slab and later on we'll give that as a um normal uh, slab so let's say dead load is two lie load is two we'll give give the rigid diaphragm here and we'll just say okay we are going to uh, basically focus on the foundation system all right so 10 story building can be easily modeled like this through the template functions now let us give certain earthquake and wind loading so we'll go to the uh, load patterns we'll just give the earthquake all right so it is the static earthquake force that we are going to give and we are also going to give the wind force so here we'll just give the wind force through the IS one eight uh, IS eight seventy five part three. All right. So in this case, we'll see all the other things. Let's say zero degrees and ninety degrees. All the forces are there. Okay. We'll not be putting these particular parameters here. We'll straight away go to the analysis and go to the uh, foundation design. All right. So let's run the analysis. I'll just give this as let's say. trial one file now first project actually i'm going to run the analysis and basically why we require both the different softwares now many many people they say that only etabs is enough why why to go, go for the safe without safe the foundation would not be safe now let me tell you a few things actually before it gets analysis so let's say this is the superstructure and there is a substructure which is the foundation system all right so we are, generally what we do is we give the fixed supports over here all right so because of the fixed supports we'll see the maximum forces there is no redistribution of the forces the moment you give the foundation as a spring or something the redistribution of the forces will occur and you will not get the actual figures during the analysis so that's the reason we initially give the maximum rigid surface so that you know total forces will be, will be getting it uh, otherwise certain forces will be eliminated particularly displacements and the moments will uh, will be uh, neutralized to certain extents if there is a settlement that has been modeled so that's the reason initially we give that as a pinned support or the uh, fixed support all right so uh, the analysis is done now let's see that so since the analysis is done, I would like to show you the the bending moment diagram. So this is the bending moment diagram. You will see that the shear force diagram S22, uh, shear 2 is the shear force diagram. If you want to see the actual forces, you will see the actual forces of the columns. Now I would like to see, since I have given the earthquake loadings and all, I would like to show you that loading also. So let's say earthquake forces, what is the deflection and all. So we'll just see the deflection also over here so this is how the earthquake deflection will occur somebody will say sir it is just the color no uh, this is the different colors so basically it is the earthquake in the x direction so you will see that this is the earthquake that is happening okay so this is the earthquake deflection that is happening now all these forces are there now imagine that you know everything is set it right we need to go for the foundation design so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the file, export, and this is the option that we'll be selecting it. Now, of course, we'll be selecting the base option. We'll not be selecting any other floor. We'll be selecting the floor if you are doing the only the uh, slab analysis or the beam analysis. All right. If you want to go for the base foundation, so obviously we'll go to the base and which option we'll be selecting. There are three options are there. One option is export uh, floor uh, loads only and there are other two options so what is the significance of this option so the first option is basically for the uh, individual floor design analysis and design second option is basically for the foundation 
analysis and design and the third option is yeah it's a tricky option why what is it export floor loads plus the columns and wall distortion what is the columns and wall distortion the displacements of the columns and shear walls if they are, they are their distortion means it is getting deflected or distortions that basically we are going to study uh, with this so this is differential axial shortening effect if it is there that would be studied with this particular option so this is generally not required many many cases but it is definitely required if the actual shortening effect is there at certain columns so it means that this column is settling more than this column so in that particular case what is the strain that is getting developed between this particular beam and the slab if you want to study that you have to select this option and go to the safe and design everything all right so this is how it is now let's go to the other option now let's say go this option and go to the base and we'll be selecting all the load cases and just say okay now the we will just save this file over here just i'll copy this path all right so you will see that the files are getting exported now here if you want to import the same file you don't need to go to the file new model and all you have to go to the safe f2k file and just give this file and just say double click here and it will be imported here now oops you will see that nothing is imported everything is like you know it's a blank screen only please wait i would like to show you that there are certain forces out here that will come in a minute like this so you will see that there are forces here so obviously this is something else so if you right click it at any particular joint you will see that you know the dead load lie load earthquake load eq is the earthquake load wind load w is the wind load all these loads are getting exported all right so what you do is over here you have to make sure that you will be giving the slab here so I've given the slab here and I would like to just, you know, extend it a little bit more because at this particular place, you know that there is a load here. So you need to extend this a little bit outside. So what you do is, okay, so you'll select this and go here and uh, edit areas and there is expansion areas. So this is the option that let's say, for example, if you want to extend it by... 1200 mm so it is going beyond this particular point as a 1200 mm all right so this is how you will give and now at this particular place i'll be giving the spring support what is the spring support spring support is basically spring is what if you see that there's a ball pen and there is a spring here spring is the actual force divided by the settlement i'll repeat force upon area is the stress force upon settlement is the stiffness all right so we'll be giving this uh subgrade modulus over here now how, who will give this upgrade modulus is from the geotechnical report all right so once you will give this here just apply this spring constants and now i'll be making sure that i am giving am i giving the right property of the of the slab so let's say uh, this is the property and i'll be giving here let's say uh, 800 is the thickness okay or there is another option i'll just give first of all 800 and let us see how it is going now here you can go to the slab or you can go to the mat foundation also i'll be going to the mat foundation and just say run the analysis now i'll be giving 0 2 okay now the analysis is running after running the analysis you will see certain uh, deflection shape the first thing that you will be seeing it is uh, over here as the how much amount of SBC that is required so this is the amount of SBC so 60 is the SBC that is required if it is more than that uh, here it is going uh, downwards 
and here you will see that this is the pressure that is coming here which is the upper this is the deflection shape a diagram along with this so if you want to see the undeformed shape this is the undeformed shape of this all right so these are the different values so here here what are the values 101 is the sbc here it is 50 60 here it is 101 why the sbc is more here more here more here more here and less here because there is if you see the ETAS model you will see that there is there is no uh, support here there are no supports here at this particular place there are support here 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 so you will see at this particular place the loading is there so here the loads are there whereas if you go to the safe here the loads are not there the loads are there at those four quadrants all right so here the sbc requirement is in the range of 101 whereas here it is 60 or something all right so if 150 200 is the sbc this particular raft thickness is okay all right so this is how actually you will be exporting it to the safe and do the subgrade modulus check i mean the bearing pressure along with that there is a punching shear as well as you will see uh, the ratio is 1.2 1.4 here it is pointed so here it is the uh, the thickness of the raft is okay but here it is not okay because it is 1.4 1.4 is the dc ratio okay dc ratio what is dc ratio d is the demand c is the capacity this ratio it has to be less than one if it is more than one like this particular case it means it is failing understood so please make sure that the structure is not failing and you are giving right uh, supports and the thicknesses so if you want to do that you can create another uh, uh, you know area like this over here and uh, give that as a drop panel as let's say 800 so i'll give this as a let's say 1500 and if you are giving the drop panel over here let's say this one all right so i'll be giving at this particular place the drop panel so how to give that so this slab 2 is the drop panel rectangular slab this is the slab 2 which is the drop panel i'll be giving let's say 1.2 meter by let's say 1.2 meter where here 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 and here okay i given the drops i'll just double click it here and make sure that it's a drop here so that there is no confusion and once it is done i'll rerun the analysis and check whether this particular raft thickness is okay or not right so you can see that this one was 1.4 it has been reduced to 0.79 so it can be again instead of 1.5 you can go for 1.2 or 1.3 or something that can be optimization can be done along with that you will see that the reinforcement of the slab also can be done with this option there is a strip options are there and there is a finite element option we'll generally design it with the finite element option so you can see that how much is the reinforcement that we require at this particular place at the top side at the bottom side okay so here you are getting mm square per meter so that much amount of reinforcement you are getting obviously here it is required more because there is a drop panel as well as there is a slab there is a um, raft and the column all right so this is all about uh, today so this is how actually you require the foundation for the foundation design you require the safe as a software all right so along with the safe without safe the uh, the foundation cannot be safe let me tell you if you are using the e tabs only for the foundation design that is a big mistake that many people they do it you have to export certain things to the safe to understand what is the implication of that safe is basically the flat plate finite element uh, uh, analysis file at the model uh, in which you can design the isolated footings combined footing raft footing raft plus piles soil structure interaction also you can do it there are many things there are uh, you know certain non-linear types of analysis are also there i'll just share my screen one more time 
so if you go here at this particular place you will see that varied variety of different uh, uh, you know non-linear options are there so there is a linear option here there is a there are three types of non-linearity options are also there so which one on the option we need to check it for what so all this complexity is also there okay so please make sure that you are understanding all these parameters then only you go for the uh, uh, for the software to design it i have shown you specifically the two parameters which are the three parameters which are extremely important one is the punching shear parameter the second one you will see that what is the uh, subgrade modulus and how much is the uh, the pressure that is coming onto the raft and the third thing is the reinforcement all right so these three parameters along with that the crack width uh, is another criteria the value, value engineering is another criteria upward soil pressure uh, and the soil structure interaction is another criteria so many many different criteria are there that you need to study while designing the raft i hope you really like the video and if you really liked it please uh, like it up uh, if you really loved it please subscribe to the channel thank you very much bye bye